Hello, my name is Nicole and I am an animal care specialist here at Brookfield Zoo's Tropic World. Today's chat is going to be about monkeys, but not just any monkeys, old world monkeys, some of my favorite. These guys are extremely intelligent, very diverse, very social animals, and I have a lot of fun working with these guys. We have a total of 14 animals out here. Uh, we have Red Schmidt's red-tailed Gwinnins and Angolan Colobus. Now, you may be wondering, what is an old world monkey? So these guys are native to Africa and Asia only, whereas new world monkeys are just from South America. They are more closely related to apes than new world monkeys. However, some of the differences between old world monkeys and apes are that they have tails, whereas apes do not, and they are smaller in size compared to gorillas and orangutans. They do share some common features. So they both have forward-facing eyes, highly flexible arms and legs, and agile fingers, just like us humans. Other interesting facts include that their tails are not prehensile like New World monkeys, this means that they don't wrap around branches to help them move about the treetops. The, their nostrils are pointed downward in comparison to New World, which face more to the side. When they're pregnant, they, the pregnancy lasts between five to seven months, and they typically give birth to a single offspring. However, twins do occur just like in great apes, and some animal care specialists here at the zoo. Infants are born very well developed. They're strong. So this allows them to cling to their mothers on day one. Now compared to other mammals, they take longer to, a more, longer time to mature, uh, usually around five years of age. So this helps the monkeys uh, survive in the wild. So let's look at our red-tailed Gwinnins down here. They live in groups ranging from seven to 30, yeah, seven to 30 individuals. Here we have seven, one adult male, two sub-adult males, four females, and they range from the ages of 20 years to four years. Males weigh around eight pounds and females around seven. Their body lengths, not including their tails, range from one to two feet in length. Now their tails can be twice as long as their body, reaching up to about 35 inches long. And this helps them balance in the treetops. Now remember I talked about the New World primates who use their tails to wrap around the tree. Well, these long tails for our Old World monkeys are more of balance. They can live up to 28 years of age. And in the wild, they come from Angolia, Cameroon, Central Africa Republic, the Congo, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. So red-tailed Gwinnins have what's called cheek pouches. Think of elastic cheeks. They use these pouches to store food to eat later on and to keep others from stealing their food. They also do nose to nose touching, and this is a sign of affection amongst animals, uh, amongst members of the same group. They are omnivores, and that means they eat everything, but these guys mainly prefer fruit and they love bugs, especially mealworms. Now, red tail nose spots are unique to each individual, kind of like human fingerprints and gorilla nose prints. Young red tails have nose spots, and these often look similar to their parents. So we also have Angolan colobus monkeys. We have a total of seven as well. We have one adult male, one sub-adult male, four females and one male toddler. And these guys range in age from about 19 to two years old. So the word colobus is derived from a word meaning mutilated one because unlike other monkeys, 
these colobus have a very small thumb that is barely present. So it actually looks like they don't even have a thumb. It may sound odd, but this does in fact help them locomote through the trees. So a fun fact, these infants are born all white and they start changing to their adult color around three months old. So this is thought to help promote anting behavior among the females. So basically this helps the nursing mothers have time to feed themselves uh, to satisfy her own nutritional needs. And it also helps give these moms a break because don't we all need that? Now the females lead the troop, but the dominant male takes responsibility for defending the troop's territory and protecting the troop from predators. Colobus monkeys, they eat so many leaves, some of which are too toxic for other species, that they have actually evolved a multi-chambered stomach that helps them break down the fermented leaves so they can absorb these, the proper nutrients. In the wild, researchers have observed these guys eating clay from termite mounds and actually even stealing coal from local villages, which is thought to help aid in their digestion. So it's kind of like a natural medicine that they found. Uh, I once had a person describe these guys as tree cows because their digestive system is so similar to a cow. Uh, I've also had people call them skunk monkeys because of their coloration and because of their gassy nature related to their gut system. So besides the leaves, which actually makes up two thirds of their diet, they also enjoy stripping bark from branches, seeds, nuts, vegetables, and various other leafies such as kale and lettuce. They love kale. Angolan colobus are the most arboreal of any African monkey. So this means that they prefer to stay high in the trees away from the ground. They live in dense rainforests, both in the lowlands and coastal mountains found in Congo, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. And although they're actually named after Angolia, they are rarely found there. These guys can live up to 30 years of age and they weigh between 13 and 25 pounds. So the females on the lower end, the males on the higher end. So with these guys, there's more of a difference in size between the males and the females in comparison to our red tails. Uh, in the wild, they are considered vulnerable due to habitat loss from deforestation and poaching um, mainly because of their large body size. So here in Tropic World, we have a mixed group of monkeys. They generally leave each other alone in a respectful way. Sometimes we may see the youngsters from each of the groups playing with each other, but they often stay within their own troop. So enrichment, okay, enrichment is super important for any animal. But since there are mixed type of species, monkeys out here, we try to make sure that each item suits each species needs, preferences, and natural behaviors. It's important to have enough for all of them. So this is so they don't compete for food, there's no fights, and so that one animal can't hoard too much food at one time. We want them to be healthy and happy. We have various enrichment items out here. So we have uh, bark boards, which we will smear peanut butter on, jelly, applesauce, and this helps them work at the dexterity um, with their fingers while they forage for food. We have forage piles. This mimics the foraging uh, that they would do in the wild through the plant and forest debris. Out here we have uh, bark chip piles and we'll put seeds, worms, all kinds of fun stuff that they would like. Uh, we'll put branches out here and the colobus especially love to strip the brows of leaves and bark. And uh, we do have a very nice relationship with ComEd. So, in the warmer months, when ComEd cuts branches to clear electrical lines in your neighborhoods, they bring those branches to the zoo for many of the animals to eat. 
In the winter time, we will order brow fresh brows from Florida. We also have frozen ice treats out here, which is made out of sugar-free drinks, or we'll just put water with frozen vegetables inside. Animal care specialists can mix food items like seeds or raisins inside, or just put sticks in there. This keeps them busy, especially the red tails, and they sometimes lift these treats up and they'll throw them in order to break them into small pieces. I personally love giving these guys co whole coconuts and see them play ball with them out onto the, uh, their habitat. So we as animal care specialists, we monitor the health of our animal collection very closely. So everything from watching what each individual eats, how they behave, their weight. We offer diet supplements based on our zoo nutritionist guidelines, and we'll make sure that the monkeys get regular checkups with our zoo veterinarians. So over the years, we have been able to train our monkeys to voluntarily go into training boxes. So this allows them to be transported to our vet services building. This is something that you might do at home with your cats in order to, in order to take them to the vet. This takes time, trust, understanding of each monkey's personality. Some, like most of the red tails, have been really excited to go in their training box for special treats like raisins, peanuts, and bugs. They learn really quickly. Colobus, on the other hand, they're still motivated by seeds and other treats like steamed sweet potato, but it takes them a little bit longer. Little by little, these monkeys are helping us help them going to the doctor, and it makes it easier for them, it makes it easier for us. So some of the monkeys, when they were playing with their enrichment, they just we're kind of digging things out and throwing them on the floor. Uh, why do they do that? Well, just like us, they have preferences. Um, not A lot of people automatically assume like, oh, monkeys love bananas. Well, that's not true. We'll put a variety of different food items out here and if they're throwing it, it usually means that they don't like it. <laughs> so yeah, just like us, they have their food preferences. They can be picky. And what kinds of things do they have today? So today, if you look down here, we have our red-tailed Gwynin playing with uh, a leaf feeder. So we have uh, staff here who specially made these and they're actually made out of um, fabric that is made at uh, car washes. So it was designed to look like a leaf and inside I put some sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and some worms. So they'll carry it around and after it's done, after they've emptied it out, they'll just start tossing around and having fun with it like kids. What would you say is um, the favorite treat of everybody? Like what would everybody in here eat? Peanut butter. Yeah. Peanut butter by far. I say, I don't think there's one animal on this habitat right now who would say no to peanut butter. How fast can they locomote through the trees? Uh, they locomote really fast. Um, I can't tell you the speed exactly, but um, if you were to race a colobus and a red tail, I would say the red tails would win. They seem a little bit faster because they're smaller um, body size. Um, yeah. So they don't use their tails for um, like his prehensile, you know, what do you call it? Like, yeah, prehensile like new world yeah. monkeys. Yeah. So what do they use their tails for? For balance in the trees. So, it, I mean, you will not see them wrapping it around the branch. Um, usually it'll be held more high up in the air and yeah, it's, uh, it's quite interesting to watch them locomote. That was play behavior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit earlier we saw two of them kind of tussling on the ground. Yeah, they, they play a lot. And, and you know the difference between a fight or play. 
um, fights are a lot louder. <laughs> Um, but the younger individuals are, are our playful ones. The adults like to just sit to the side and watch, and if it gets too intense, they will interfere. The younger ones also do like to antagonize group members from the other species. So you'll see the red tails especially antagonizing the colobus, but they've gotten used to it. Um, so you know, kind of like aunt and uncle, just putting it up with it. <laughs> so what's your favorite thing about each uh, species? I like the enthusiasm of the red-tailed Gwinnins. They are just, they're so motivated to interact with us. They're so motivated to train, uh, like their training boxes. They, they love attention from their keepers. They're, I just love watching their social interactions between each of them. Uh, with our Angolan colobus, I like the challenge that these guys present to us because they're more standoffish. They like to be with each other more than they do anything else. Um, the training challenge with them is something I do enjoy actually. They, um, they're socially complex animals, uh, their interactions with each other. So yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a variety of things that I like about um, each one of these guys. We have log feeders out here. They're right on the side of that tree. So it's like a little, log with a hole and I fill that up with a forage pile or we can fill it with um, a spreadable item. So we will put things like this all over the habitat. Um, and we do try to spread it out as much as we can so there's no competition. And down here we have a bark board that one of our colobus are um, eating peanut butter off of. That concludes our talk and thanks for coming to Bringing the Zoo to You. I hope you enjoyed this discussion about our old world monkeys and we look forward to seeing you soon.